Hey, if you'd like to support the production of more Move University video tutorials, then please visit the support move section on moveuniversity.com. Thank you and enjoy. Okay, so first up is Chylomicrons, and let's figure out what's going on with them. So they are the largest lipoprotein. They are the largest lipoprotein, and they are the least dense lipoprotein. Why are, they, why are they the least dense? Well, because they're 85% triglycerides, and triglycerides aren't very dense entities. Okay. Um, they are produced in the fed state. Okay. Why is that? Well, let's think about the function. Okay. Uh, well, what is the function? The function is they deliver dietary, otherwise known as exogenous, lipids, mainly triglycerides. So, I have that written here. Just hit it to make you think. <laughs> Okay, um, so they deliver dietary lipids. Okay, so it makes sense that they're produced in the fed state. Um, and which hormone is dominant during the fed state? Insulin. Okay, they're produced in the fed state, but where? They're produced in the intestinal, intestinal epithelial cells. And that should also make sense if we think about the function. If their job is to deliver dietary lipids, so these are things that we ate, when we eat, our food goes down our esophagus, into our stomach, and eventually into our intestine where we absorb it. So it makes sense that they're being absorbed into the intestinal epithelial cells, and then from there, these chylomicrons take them and transport them in our body. And they enter the blood one to two hours after a meal. So yeah, so I mean, this should make sense, and I, I guess I just mentioned that. So thinking about the function helps you understand why this stuff is the way it is. Um, another thing is that it accepts proteins from HDL to become mature chylomicrons. So there are these things called nascent chylomicron, nascent chylomicrons, uh, which can um, eventually become mature chylomicrons. Uh, where does this actually happen? This happens in the blood. This must happen in the blood because that's where HDL is. Okay. So what are the main apoproteins in chylomicrons? Well, the key one is B48. B48 is unique to chylomicrons. There's also C2 and E, and those come from HDL. Okay. So let's take a look at this. This might be kind of messy, but just follow me through it. And we should be okay. All right, so um, let's start up here at the top left in the intestinal lumen. The intestinal lumen. So in the intestinal lumen, that's where we're going to have the digestive products from the food that we ate. We're going to have some fatty acids and some uh, two monoacylglycerols. This just means that the the acyl group that's attached to the glycerol is on the two carbon or the second carbon of the glycerol um, backbone. So these things are going to be taken up into the intestinal epithelial cells across the brush border uh, from the intestinal lumen. The smooth ER will take them and synthesize triglycerides. The rough ER will make the protein APO B48. They'll go to the Golgi, and the Golgi will spit out this nascent chylomicron, which has triglycerides in a high content, as well as B48, and as well as a few other um, uh, you know things like phospholipids and and uh, cholesterols and some cholesterol esters, but though in small amounts, most of it is triglycerides. So from the intestinal epithelial cells, the nascent chylomicron will travel through into the lymph, to the lymph where we have the nascent chylomicron, and it'll eventually be dumped into the blood, a blood capillary or the bloodstream. Okay, so this here in red here, everything that's bound in red, is the blood. So Okay, so the, this nascent chylomicron with its B48 apoprotein uh, needs to mature, and in order to mature, um, it needs HDL to give up both its APOC2 as well as its APOE to the chylomicron. The chylomicron picks them up and becomes a mature chylomicron here. So this is a mature chylomicron, and the HDL hops off with only its A1. Now, this mature chylomicron has a bunch of triglycerides in it. In the blood, it'll arrive to this, uh, this enzyme called LPL, uh, otherwise known as lipoprotein lipase. Okay. 
lipoprotein lipase, what that does is it takes the triglycerides that are in the chylomicron. It takes those triglycerides and circle that in a different color. Let's do like uh, pink, perhaps. So the triglycerides here in the chylomicron are going to come across and get cleaved by the LPL into glycerol and fatty acids. And the, the lipoprotein lipase is anchored on sort of on the wall of the capillary in the bloodstream. Um, so when those triglycerides come to it, they're going to get cleaved into glycerol and fatty acids. And these lipoprotein lipases are going to be near uh, muscle tissue and adipose tissue. And so what happens is that the glycerol and the fatty acids hop off of, um, once this triglyceride is broken down. And the fatty acids get taken up by the cells, in this case here, to the muscle and over here into the adipose tissue. Okay. Now, the muscle cell is basically going to use these fatty acids, break them down via, via beta oxidation. Oops, that's not pretty. Via beta oxidation to give acetyl-CoA's, which can go to the TCA cycle and uh, the electron transport chain and eventually give you ATP. So the muscle basically um, uses it, uses the fatty acids for energy. Okay. Um, whereas the uh, adipose tissue will take the fatty acids, uh, activate them in fatty acyl CoA's, and can join them with uh, glycerol 3 phosphate to make triglycerides, which will be stored. Right, so it stores energy. And one thing I uh, sort of zipped past a little bit quickly there was that um, lipoprotein lipase is actually activated by C2. So that's something that was mentioned in that that chart on the apoproteins um, and, or apolipoproteins in that part two video. So this C2 is actually activating the LPL. In fact, since we're in the fed state, another thing actually activates this LPL, and that is insulin. Okay. So insulin's going to activate this LPL. It activates both this one and this one. I just drew both of them to kind of show you that there would be some near the muscle and some near the adipose tissue. So now the triglycerides that were, were cut into the fatty acids, or the, yeah, the fatty acids and the glycerol, we know what happens to the fatty acids. They're taken up by the tissues. The glycerol, that's going to end up being recycled by, it's going to be sent back to the liver. Okay, so we can see that the, the arrow is coming off there, heading towards the liver. And the, the glycerol will be recycled. Now, when these triglycerides are cleaved by lipoprotein lipase, the mature chylomicron ends up becoming chylomicron remnants, and it loses its uh, its B48 as well as its um, as well as its C2, um, and all that's left is the APOE, which can bind the um, APOE receptor or the LDL receptor and be taken up by the liver. And when it is taken up here, it's um, the APOE comes over and binds the um, the receptor here, the APOE receptor, or the, or the LDL receptor, and it's uh, endocytosed here, so this is endocytosis. And once it's uh, taken up by the liver, lysosomes will then fuse with it and basically um, uh, break it up into all its different components. And so we'll have fatty, fatty acids, cholesterol, amino acids, glycerol, all these different things um, to be recycled by the liver. So that's kind of what chylomicrons do. They take these these um, dietary lipids that we started with up here on the top left. We started off with these. We take them in and we send them through our blood to the tissues that need them and then take whatever's left over and recycle it in the liver. Hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to share the video with anyone who you think might find it helpful. Thanks and happy studying.